Denmark proposes hijab ban in elementary schools and backlash ensues. On September 12th, the Danish Commission for the Forgotten Women's Struggle, an organization of Denmark's ruling Social Democratic Party, announced a proposal to ban hijabs for students across Danish elementary schools. It is one of nine recommendations to prevent, quote, social, no, excuse me, prevent honor-related social control of women from minority backgrounds. Additional recommendations include modern Danish language courses for minority ethnicity parents, ethnically diverse groups in daycare centers, preventing exemptions to Christian studies in schools, and improvement of sex education in primary schools and tighter oversight of independent Muslim schools. The headscarf ban proposal has faced huge backlash in Denmark. Uh, Iram uh, Kawaja, associate professor at the Danish School of Education at Aarhus University, has spoken against the ban. Uh, Kawaja said, quote, it is problematic to equate the hijab with negative social control. There are also girls who do not wear the hijab who are exposed to negative social control. Wait, but doesn't it include other things other than the hijab as well? So some of the other recommendations include, you know, okay, having some of these parents learn more Danish, um, improvement of sex education, tighter oversight, like I said, of independent Muslim schools. Wait. The Christian um, studies part, that's, that's. Okay, but this, this actually really confused me. They, one of the recommendations was preventing exemptions to Christian studies classes in schools. What? Why? I don't this know. That cons- was not clear to me based on what I was reading. I was like, what the hell? Ew. This like, is I don't like- think that. <laughs> This is inconsistent. This is like, I don't understand. Are they saying Denmark is Christian? I don't understand. And improve sex education. Yeah, and sex education, I'm for. But Christian studies and classes, this goes like they're not being consistent. Like this seems just being anti-immigrant more than anti. Like I would have been endorsing this because it's like, oh, we're going to stand against brainwashing our children right that's not i don't know yeah go denmark but they're like oh yeah take the islam out and put the christian in like let's give them the right form of brainwashing can somebody like maybe we're not under, this is so confusing and maybe we're not understanding what actually happened here like is this actually what happened or are we misunderstanding so no, this, this is, is so like confusing. multiple reporting I've read on this has like talked about this. So this is like some sort of Danish thing that I don't understand. But like, let's step away from like that Christian studies thing for a moment, because I want to get into the argument about the hijab. So the oh, defenders sure. are basically saying that it will disproportionately stigmatize ethnic minority girls and disproportionately stigmatize these families by promoting the assumption that they are pressuring their daughters to do this. And so what do you think about that? I mean, if you're doing it selectively, then yes. If you're like, hey, we're just doing it for everybody, not just Islam, then like you're not stigmatizing anybody. You're just like removing dogma entirely from kindergarten or whatever daycare whatever then you're not stigmatizing anybody we're gonna like we're just anti we just have an anti-dogma policy i'm sorry okay but if you do like oh no to islamic dogma and yes to cre- yeah then you're stig- then this is more anti-immigration rather than anti-dogma but let me actually maybe i'm just, here Tra- uh, read this Trails is Trump. having some really important clarification thank you for our resident dane Trails is saying, in Danish public schools, we have a class called Christian Studies. It has been called like that for like half a century, but in practice, it is more like a religion class. But because it is called Christian Studies, parents can exempt their children from it, and that makes it so that Muslims don't learn a pretty important topic of Danish culture. That makes a lot more sense, so they should change the name of this program. To have yeah, it be what? more reflective of social studies, not Christian studies. Because if that if that's the contention, then I support people like being allowed to have an exemption if that's the framing of it. 
But it's saying in practice, it's more like re a religion class. Well, in practice, that's horrible. No, it, like, I believe it's more like not imbuing religion in children, but teaching children about religion in like a sociological context. Trells, correct me if I'm wrong, you don't, but that's how I, I interpreted what you said. You don't need that in kinder in kindergarten? And daycare? I don't know if it's in kindergarten. This is elementary school. Elementary, elementary school. Okay, you don't need this until you hit college. What? You don't think it it's really, in, it, at all helpful to teach children about comparative religion? Elementary school? Elementary school is about the foundational basic things like math, science, right, reading, writing. You don't need to learn what, what the Hindus believe in, do you? I think that's useful. Okay. I think it's just like an up. Yeah, I think that's what especially it if be. it's the, in the context of just teaching people. Okay. This is what these these people believe. This is what these people believe. Look at they're not so different than us. Look at maybe what your parents tell you about these groups and maybe how they're bad isn't true. You know, countering okay. narratives that you get at home that could be harmful. I don't know what they're teaching. Okay, the fact that it's called Christian studies, you know, you shouldn't be forcing it upon kids. Even if that, even if it's just the name, okay. Even if it has no Christian teachings, but it's just called Christian studies, like I, you, you shouldn't force it on people until you change the goddamn name. Well, okay. Y yes, okay, yes. But here's the thing. Also, in Denmark, what is called elementary school is very different than in America. So in America, I don't know what it is like in Canada. In America, elementary school is like kindergarten to usually fifth grade max okay but for in denmark i believe it's the ages of six to 16. so it's actually because one person was there was a hijabi student that was interviewed about this and she was saying like she was 15 years old and she's like oh i'm gonna have to take off the hijab that surprised me because in my context 15 is way too old for elementary school so these are actually kids that are much older Charles is saying, correct, Susanna, it's a comparative religious studies. Also, it varies a lot between school levels. So in elementary school, it would be like maybe reading a Christmas story. Would you read a Ramadan story as well or just a Christmas story? See, it's a Christmas That's story. So it's like it's Christian focused. He's just giving that as an example. Okay, Charles, would you also learn like a Ramadan story or is it just a, like a Christmas story? Is it, does it have a Hindu? Does it happen does it have a diwali section does it have a hindu diwali section or no that'd be cool if it doesn't if it's just like here's a christmas story but no diwali and ramadan then it's not secular enough okay it's a um, christmas story is that does it have a christmas story but does it show christianity at a, in a positive because it, i can't believe it would have a christmas story and it's just like objectively analyzing christmas if it has a Christmas story, it's celebrating Christmas. Do you know what I mean? This is a pro-Christian class. Garbage. Garbage, I tell you. Okay? But, it, it's, okay. Yeah. Here's the thing. Let's ignore this Christian yeah. studies contention we have. Okay? For the time being. In general, I think all things being equal, like removing this dumb contention, um, this is something I support. Like having young girls wearing the veil in school is really upsetting, like to me personally. And so the whole idea is that they're trying to prevent girls from constantly living under social pressure from their parents. And there are people, um, percentage of the commission that came up with these rules are Muslim or come from Muslim backgrounds. And they, they themselves say that there are few reasons that a girl would wear the hijab at this young of an age besides pressure from your family. And they have evidence for it. For example, the commission said a study from 2019, which the commission referred to states that only 40 3% of the ethnic minority girls in the study are allowed to see male friends in their spare time. While the same is true for 88% of the ethnically Danish girls. So they're saying minority background girls are way less likely to be allowed to spend time with just boys their age. 
13% of ethnic minority girls are afraid that their families will plan their future against their will, while the same is the case for 5% of the ethnic majority girls. One of the aims of the commission is to bring the recommendation on how to equalize the differences like these between Danes who are ethnic minorities and ethnic majorities. What do you think about that? Okay, first of all, how dare you? My contention is not dumb, okay? And No, I, I just don't want to get distracted from this greater topic at hand. But let me tell you why they are connected, okay? Because I agree that hijab for children should not be allowed. Okay, I agree with that. I agree also why hijab shouldn't be allowed, for example, for government jobs and stuff like that. Okay, but it has to be done, done the right way. I I often suspect that when they that when people do stuff like this, it could be the intentions could be described in that way, and if that was truly their intentions, I would be supporting it. And because of the things you said, you you know, I would be supporting it exactly because of the things you said, right? But I just worry sometimes that they bring up these good reasons to say why they're doing something, but the actual intentions is to give in to a voter base that is anti-immigrant, and they're just trying to make the country less welcoming to immigrants. So to me, the intention matters, even if you are right about the results, okay? And one way to look for me to look at whether those are act, the actual into the th reasons you mentioned are the actual intentions is to look for consistency. Because if they are picking one negative effect over children or others and ignoring the others, to me, that's a red flag. So do you see why I think it's connected why i bring this you know you're like oh it's just like distract us from what that no I, why I, I, think... I completely understand yeah right and when you say like oh his job is bad for children here are the reasons i'm like yes yes you're right you you shouldn't be able to do that to children you know this is not you can't do this this shouldn't be allowed okay and you're like also we're adding we're adding christian class <laughs> we're promoting christianity all right hold um excuse me hold up a second what the hell i think you're i think maybe i'm now questioning why you're doing this okay i mean maybe i'm wrong about this but i think it's a it's a major red flag it is a major red flag i mean this was this was pushed for by a socialist party armin yeah okay well i'm just communist from the largest socialist party so <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, you still might be giving into a voter base that you might be like, hush, hush, you know what we're doing this. Like, you, you know, I, I mean, people might be frustrated with like changing demographics and you might be appealing to that. You might be like, you, we could get votes for this. I don't know. I'm just asking questions. It's a red flag. I'm not coming up with any conclusions. I'm just wondering. Here, let's see what Trell has to say since he's our Danish person here. Yeah. Trell is saying, just so you know, the commission had several people from minority backgrounds on it, including a Kurdish member of parliament. Most of this signed on to this until the backlash. That's true. A lot of them, like, suddenly pulled out of this completely after there was, like, a little bit of backlash. Okay, um, but if this is the Kur so what are we saying? Is it because it's Kurdish? Because Kurdish have a stereotype of being secular or even atheist, like, more atheist. Well, secular it depends. Than yeah, yeah, but like if the stereotype is this, if Terrell is saying with the understanding that, oh, we even have people from their own community agreeing with this, because if that's the case, the fact that they're Kurdish might actually be, she might be on our side. <laughs> I mean, if you want like stereotypes, the Kurdish member might be more on our side than the, than, than the Islamic side. Here's yeah. a statement on it. Unfortunately, we still see honor-related social control in minority ethnic environments where very young girls do not have the same rights and opportunities to live a life that most of us take for granted. It is therefore important that we as a society drop the fear of touching on the subject and intervene early. Mm. That's a commendable approach or a commendable yeah. sentiment. Mm. Do, you, do you think like I'm wrong to have some concerns about this no i mean i share those concerns you mm. i you just seem like more willing to throw the baby out with the bathwater than me i am very much for not allowing hijab in elementary schools 
Okay? I'm very much for that. I'll just be clear. Okay? Yeah, I know. This, yeah. So there you go. I'm just clear. What do you think? So I saw a comment from D in the live chat, and D was saying that she doesn't support this because basically children will be taken out of school by fundamentalist traditionalist parents. And so for, the sake of girls getting, for the sake of girls getting educated, we should allow it so at least they can get educated and, you know, start. Okay, no, I don't. Well. Okay, correct. Like, Trump, I don't agree with D on this because correct me if I'm wrong, Troll in the live chat. It, in, you, you're not, you can't take your schools out, your girls out of elementary school. And you can't do that. You're not, that's, it's forced, it's mandatory. So what are you going to do? I know, so like, in to... Germany, for example, the government will come after you if you try to take your kids out of school. Like, they have much more of an ability to intervene in those situations than, say, in India. Like, in India, my stance is different in terms of the hijab ban there because the consequences of girls not getting educated in India is so much worse, and the government does not have the same ability to ensure that girls are getting a right to education and not being denied that on the basis of not being allowed to wear a hijab in the classroom, right? So because in, in principle, I'm completely against hijab in the classroom, but because of the consequences to Indian women in Indian society at large, that's why I make that exception, only because yeah. of the result of the consequences. But yeah. that not being a factor, then I'm completely on this side. Yeah, before you ban the hijab in elementary school, you have to make sure that you have the capability of making sure that no child can skip elementary school, right? So you don't want to make you you want to make sure that banning hijab in elementary school is not going to result from more girls not getting educated. You you can only you first you have to get to that level that we will not let one child left behind. Everybody's getting elementary school. Once you get to that level, then ban hijab in elementary school. Yeah. Yeah. D is also saying too many Muslim girls around the world miss out on an education. Exactly. And that's like what we care about the most, right? Yeah. Yeah. If it's between banning the hijab or education, like which one is more priority? I think the education takes more priority, right? Oh, so if you, if, that's not if, even a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if any girls are going to lose education because of banning their job, then keep their job, right? But I don't. I think Denmark has passed that. I think Denmark is a country that is capable of making sure that you do not uh, that girls don't skip um, school. Yeah, I think that. Here, there we Charles go. Charles is saying the Danish constitution mandates educational duty, not necessarily in public schools, but parents need to show that their ch child is receiving schooling equivalent to public school. Okay. Otherwise, child services come in and that can get pretty draconian. <laughs> Good. Well, thank you for Terrell's for appearing with us today to educate us about your country. I appreciate it because um, a lot of the stuff, like I said, is highly dependent on the context of the laws and how things are actually operating and what is enforceable. So it's important to think about these things. Yeah. We got a super chat. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's highlight that super chat. Oh, here. Yeah. Um, Vishwa is saying, hello, I'm curious to know how many people on average watch these streams uh, live on Facebook. I couldn't know because we don't have FB page. Anymore. Very little. Like, it's mostly just YouTube. Like, always less than 10. I don't even know why we go live on Facebook. Because Facebook, we have 2 million followers on YouTube and uh, Facebook. And Facebook doesn't push it to anybody. So maybe we should stop going live on Facebook. What do you think? Well, why not? I don't know. I think it's okay. To no, we, we respect a few people. No, no. People on Facebook, even though Facebook doesn't show us to Casey you guys. Casey watches us on Facebook. He's the yes. best. You can't leave yes, him out yes. in the cold. We're going we're gonna to keep going live on Facebook for the very few Shouts people out to that Casey. we get. Yes, yes, yes. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, love we're gonna that continue. guy. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how Facebook Live doesn't push us to all our followers well honestly based on what i see from our side of things it's hard to tell how many people are watching us live on facebook yeah. on, on the different platforms yeah, anyways facebook. oh here just a little note you want to read this one charles is saying just a note denmark has an actual state church mandated by article 4 of our constitution so we are not legally secular so you can see small pieces of christianity here and there yeah and i know that that plays in part of it into part of it and it gets very con convoluted when it comes to what does it mean to be a dane 
given that we do have a state church, all this stuff, it's part of our culture, integration, it gets really messy. Mm. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.